Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, this is video series number four for the CBEST practice exam. For the rest of the video, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below, as well as the practice exam itself. Now, once again, the video series, the purpose of it is not just to provide you the answer, because guess what? In the practice exam, in the link below, right, it gives you the answer, all the answer key to every single multiple choice, it's all provided for you, right? The goal of these videos is for you guys to see how the questions are answered, but more importantly, have you guys think about different ways to make the problem a little more complex, just to practice and so that you guys can fully grasp the material that they're expecting you to understand for the CBS exam, right? So. Video series four, that means I'm going over problem 16 to 20. Now, the interesting thing about these set of problem is that minus the all the word problems and all the different, maybe I wanna say more obscure topic, right? These are ones that you really have to be good at, right? The several problems that I'm gonna show you today is gonna to be focused on basic arithmetic. Can you add, can you subtract, can you multiply, can you divide? Can you work with negative numbers? Can you work with decimals? Can you work with fractions, right? Those are basic skills that if we are not comfortable with it, we are truly gonna struggle in the CBS exam. So that's something that we have to work on if that is something that you know is one of our weakness. So let's go over some of these problems. I'm gonna point them out and luckily for us, if this section is the most difficult, if working with negative numbers is the most difficult, with fractions, with decimals, so on and so forth, there is so much variations that we can do with it that we can just very quickly build up our skills so that we are prepared. Let's look at the first question. Here is the first question. Now, as you can see, it is very shortly worded, which is by far my favorite because after going through at least the first three video series, I'm starting to realize how much marker ink I waste just writing the problem itself, which is amazing. I think it's totally worth it. But then I feel like a punished little child having to write lines every time. So here it is. Here's our first problem. Very simple, very short. The expression negative 105 plus negative 14 plus 34 simplifies to which of the following? Now, which of the following, they do give you a multiple choice. I'm not gonna write the multiple choice because guess what? This is a fairly simple problem that we can solve and come up with the answer even without looking at the potential choices. Of course, if it doesn't show up as a potential choice, then we made a mistake, all right? So let's look at this, all right. This is fairly simple. We're just basically trying to add all of these sides together. It'll simplify into one specific number. Well, we have negative 105, we have negative 14, and then we have 34. Now, you can definitely just add it across and that's fine. The thing that I've noticed is that this one right here, if you combine it with this one, it makes it a little more simple because guess what? Negative 14 plus 34, immediately the one four cancels and you have basically a plus 20 left. Now you have a negative 105 plus 20. Right, and that should be fairly simple. At this point, we should be fairly comfortable. Well, guess what? That's almost like 20 minus 105 or just, you know, taking 20 away from the negative number, you just basically get, well, negative 85. Plain and simple. Now to practice this, rearrange the number to your heart's content, right? As complex, as simple as possible. I recommend against making ginormously large number because remember the whole focus of the question itself is do you know how to cancel positive and negatives and combine them right it doesn't serve you in any way if you make some crazy number one million seven hundred and sixty five thousand three hundred and whatever whatever and then you add another one that's like i don't know seven million six hundred and forty then you're just manipulating numbers to a degree where you lose the whole point the whole focus of the problem itself right you just want to know Positive negative number, you can cancel them out, right? And then simplify, make your life a lot easier. And in the end, just be able to combine them on to get one single number. So that's our first question. Let's move on to the second one. All right, our second question. We have this little table and this word problem. As part of a unit on weather, students record the outdoor temperature at 8.30 a.m. Doesn't really matter for five mornings. Right, so this is just basically telling you that, all right, it's somewhat well designed. They're all taking the temperature at the exact same time. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. What was the difference between the week's highest and lowest temperature? Okay, so 
The only thing I could see that could potentially trip someone up in terms of just understanding the problem is the idea of highest and lowest. Highest is fairly simple. It's just positive number as big as you can get. Lowest, however, sometimes we're used to saying lowest is as close to zero. That's not necessarily the case when you're talking about stuff like temperature or just with negative numbers in general. Usually when they're talking about lowest, it's as close to zero or if it's past zero, then as big of a negative number as you can get. So technically the lowest would be this one right here, negative 15 and the highest out of all the positive number would be this guy right here, 12. Okay, so it's asking for what's the difference. At this point, it is a simple combination of negative numbers, right? In this case, difference is subtraction. So you would just get 12 and you would subtract and then now you have a negative 15, right? Which in this case, you know, negative negative is plus. So at that point, you basically have 12 plus 15, which is 20 simple. It's 27, my pronunciation, right? Right, all right, so plain and simple, just like that, right? This is, again, just a practice of negative numbers. Can you add, can you subtract, can you multiply, can you divide? This one, can you subtract? Plain and simple. You can practice till every one of us grow a number of white hair. There are an infinite amount of potential negative problem or negative number subtraction problem that you can work on, right? If it's something that's a little confusing, just be wary of this. Other variations could be like the one in the previous video series where we're talking about sea levels, where we go above sea level and then below sea level. There is many ways to go about finding or wording negative and positive numbers. So just be very careful of that. But other than that, just be comfortable with these kind of basically negative number manipulation and then you are good to go. All right, so let's look at our third problem right here. This is a standard, fairly simple problem. You've probably seen many variations of these kind of problems when you're learning your basic arithmetic, right? A teacher has three packages of sticker. One package contained 56 stickers, right? Just so you guys can see the numbers and not get mixed up in all the words, right? Another package has 48 stickers and the third package has 50, 58 stickers. If the teacher divides the stickers equally among 27 students, how many stickers will each student receive? Fairly simple, right? How many stickers do we have total? We're gonna give everyone an equal amount of stickers, so we're gonna just divide about that. So, there are three numbers of stickers, right, for the three packages. All we have to do is figure out the total of it, so basically we're gonna add these three numbers together, and then we're gonna divide it by 27. Basic arithmetic, let's do this. All right, so we have 56 plus 48 plus 58. Fairly simple, you can add straight across if you want. If you wanna mix and match just to make your life a little easier, that's fine. This one right here, we have 56 plus 58, that's 114 plus 48, that's what, 162. So just like that, we know that a total of 162 stickers. Now we wanna divide it by 27, right? So at this point, well, what can we do? We basically write it out, 162 divided by 27, and then we try to figure out basically as close as possible can that we can um, basically divide this by. Well, if that's the case, let's see, by five, what is that? That's um, 35 plus 100, 135, okay, little more than five, six. Six is pretty close, right? And plus, here's another test taking strategy. I was just guessing numbers, but if you look at the end, most of the time, especially in a CBEST, they're not making very complicated numbers. And plus this problem is probably worded in a way where you won't have any fractions, decimal, or so on and so forth. So if we look at the back here, seven and two. Seven times some number will end with two, right? It's not necessary, it could be whatever, but then at the end of it, the last digit is gonna be two. The only thing you can really think of that's fairly close to this is six. So if we're not sure, we can just try it, 27 times six, right? Because we have two right here, because guess what? Seven times six is 42, right? So there it is, and then at that point, boom. So we know it's six. So each student is gonna get six stickers, okay? Plain and simple. This is a fairly simple problem. To practice your arithmetic, make sure you are comfortable with just understanding and reading problems in general and just being able to add, and then in this case, divide. So practice adding and dividing, and then you're good to go. The only variation that I can think of would be potentially difficult is when you end up with stuff like remainders, right? When you end up with remainders, that could potentially lead to several different branches. Is the remainder gonna end up as a result of a fraction? Are you gonna write it as a fraction? Are you gonna write it as a decimal? 
right? Or is it one of those estimate round thing, right? Because guess what? You, there's always that math joke where, all right, if a person can dig a hole in this many hours, right? And you cut it in half, right? What happens? Did he get half a hole? No, it's just a smaller hole. So you gotta be careful with stuff like that where they're wording a problem and they want you to estimate certain things that you will have to have whole numbers, right? So in this situation, this problem is fairly simple, but of course, as I mentioned, variations of it can be a little more complex. Are we looking for decimal fractions or are we estimating? So practice those three variations as well as this to basically master this potential topic. All right, so for our next problem, I actually think it's pretty cool, right? A lot of us probably have seen this before, but when we were like, Itty bitty. When we were little, we just started learning division. They would give us this nice little thing right here. And then we start filling in missing numbers. And then after that, we just become really good at division. And then we, that just goes out the window. We just start writing, all right, there's a number usually given right here. We put the number on the outside. We figure out how many times that number on the outside goes on the inside. We put that number and then we either have a remainder, which is like very in the beginning. And then afterwards we started using decimals, fractions, so on and so forth, right? Now, I actually really like this because, I mean, one, I haven't seen this any uh, in a really long time, you know, memory lane. The other thing is that it actually illustrates the structure of this form of division very, very well. So, let's look at the problem. What is the 10 digits in the dividend of the position below? So, once again, that's vocabulary at this point, right? After we get good at division, we've forgotten the vocabulary completely. Dividend is just basically a number that's inside. Number that's gonna be divided by. Right? The number that's dividing, is the divisor, plain and simple. Now, other than that, when we look at the structure, normally we're looking for the answer, but this problem actually gives us that, right? It tells us that the end result is gonna be five remainder 23. Well, if we can understand this structure, we can figure out what that missing number is, right? We know that 25 times five is gonna be as close to this number without another variation, without another like six, right? Six would be the next one up to fit in here. So it only can go in there five times, and then you have what's left over, which is 23. So if we reverse that procedure, we will know exactly what that number is. 25 times five plus, and then our remainder, 23 will give us this number. So plain and simple, 25 times five, hopefully we are pretty confident in this, right? That's just gonna be 125 plus 23. That gives us 148. Now keep in mind it's asking for the 10 digits, so we're only looking at this number right here. Let's just draw a little awkward boxes right here. That number four is what's missing. So in your multiple choice, right, you have to pick the number four for this question. Now, to practice this, not that bad. It's practicing division, but with intention, right? All you have to do in this situation is you can create or replace numbers and then just remind yourself what each and every one of the component is for, right? This is not the large number. We're trying to figure out this number goes in there how many times, right? And then what's left over is the remainder. Just understanding the structure and practicing the structure, right, will definitely get you bonus points whenever you encounter a problem like this. Although, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I think you probably encounter at most one. So if this is not something you're super comfortable with, that's fine, I just think it's really cool. I think you should know it anyway for your future study in mathematics in general, right? But at least know that this is nothing more than a division problem. All right, so our last problem of the day, we have this one right here, clearly a fraction problem. Let's just see what it's asking. Last week, Mario walked seven and three fourth mile. This week, he walked 15 and five six mile. What is the difference between the distance he walked this week and the distance he walked last week? All right, so plain and simple, subtraction, right? So we have two fractions right here. We have a 15 five six and a seven three fourth, and we're just gonna subtract these two. 15, five, six, minus seven, three, four. So we have to be comfortable with the concept of mixed fraction, being able to convert them and then subtracting them. Now, a standard way of going about it is if you wanna convert it all to improper fraction, right? Five or 15 times six plus five gives you some number over six, that's your improper fraction. And then you do the same thing here. Four times seven, which is 28, and then, you know, plus three, and then divided by four, that gives you your improper fraction of that. And then you subtract it, and then you, you know, simplify it to basically whatever the answer they want you to. Now, what I usually do 
is probably not the most recommended, right? You look at the whole numbers, and then you subtract that first, then you use the fraction, you subtract that. Now, sometimes it doesn't work because guess what? Uh, sometimes the fraction itself ends up being smaller, then you have to carry it, carry, you know, break the number even further and carry out and then subtract it. So there's always that caveat up to you. All you have to do is just be comfortable and practice, you know, basic fraction arithmetic. So for me, I just like doing it that way because conceptually it makes a lot more sense to me. If I just look at the whole number portion of it first, I have 15 minus seven, which gives me eight. Then I have to figure out the fraction. Luckily for me, just from looking at this, right, we can see that five over six is definitely bigger than three over four. So I'm not going to have the trouble of having to break this in a little further just so I have enough to subtract the three fourth, right? Nothing like that's gonna happen. So if I'm looking at five over six minus three over four, of course we can't just minus it in any way, shape, or form. We have to make sure that they have a common denominator. Well, six and four, luckily for us, that's 12. So in this case, we're gonna multiply the top and bottom here by two, that gives us 10 over 12. Subtract, and then top and bottom by three, that's gonna be nine over 12, and that gives us one over 12. So in this case, it's gonna be eight and one twelve. Simple as that, right? This is one way of solving it, right? You can do the subtraction in a multiple different way. Just be very careful in the end, because guess what? You have to simplify this, because most of the time, and most likely, the multiple choice is gonna ask for the most simplified version. So sometimes, if you're rushing through this, and then you get an answer and you forgot to simplify, all of a sudden you start messing with your own mind. You're thinking, oh, I must have made a mistake because none of the possible answers are the one I got. Could just be a simple simplification, right? So there it is, plain and simple. In order to be very good at this, practice. That's all it is, right? Pick a bunch of different improper fractions, mixed fractions, and regular fractions, and just start hashing them out, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, right? And then, then you'll be really good at fractions so that anytime you have a problem like this with fractions, it means nothing. You got it. All right, so there you have it. That's another five problem. Now, this video is actually very different from a lot of the other videos, and probably in the future video as well, because guess what? While, while going through these problems, I can understand, right? It's nice to have a number of the skills that they expect you to have when you plan on being a substitute teacher. Well, here's the thing though. If you're planning on being a substitute teacher and you're not focused in math, then some of the other skills that it's nice to have, but I don't think it should be a requirement. Right? It's cool. Some of the stuff is like, all right, do you remember the mean, the average, and the probability? Good skill to have, no doubt about it. Is it gonna be a make or break in terms of you being a substitute teacher? Probably not, right? These, I think you should. You just really should, right? You should be able to work with negative numbers. You should be able to work with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And you should have a basic understanding of decimals and fractions. So, I think at least out of all the video series so far, this one's the most important just based on the skills that they're expecting you to know. Fairly simple skills, but some of the times we're just not using it often enough that we can be a little rusty. All we have to do is just practice. And luckily for us, the skill that I feel like is the most required in terms of this exam and in general, just basic arithmetic, is one that you can practice because there's so many infinite variations that you can just look up online, make yourself, so on and so forth, just to get better at the skills. Well, hopefully you find this video a relaxing breather, I guess you could say, because we're not just working with a bunch of word problems with uh, some more obscure topics we're working on just basic arithmetic right so thank you for watching if you haven't already please like comment and subscribe i will see you in the next video